Reason number five. Sex makes you smarter. Having more sex can improve certain brain functions, including memory. With any form of exercise, and let's face it, sex is a form of exercise, blood flow increases. The increased circulation of blood transports oxygen and rich blood to the hypothalamus, the center of the brain for memory and learning. Thus, memory and brain function may be increased with sexual activity. That means sex is DHEA without a prescription. More estrogen equals brain performance. And for the men, testosterone strengthens the brain as well. Reason number four. Lose weight, get in shape. Common wisdom holds that sex is exercise. True. But to be more accurate, it's exertion. In fact, most of the benefits you'll get from sex are not the calories burned, but the muscle flexing, hormone release, testosterone helps build muscle, and the peace of mind. To look accurately at what sex can do for your shape and weight, we'll need to look at what doing nothing will get you. The average calories expended not having sex is 84 calories per hour. Let's see how we can spice that up with some nookie. 68 calories per hour. Kissing. Really? It seems if it's less than watching TV, you're not doing it right. 238 calories per hour, making out. Now that's more like it. 206 calories per hour, romantic dancing. 8 calories per hour, undressing. I'm assuming you're not doing a striptease. 80 plus calories per hour, massaging. Hmm, I wonder if this is in addition to the calories that keep you alive. It seems to me that a good massage is far more strenuous than watching TV. 300 calories per hour or more. Having sex. That's what I'm talking about. 200 calories per hour giving oral sex. See? Much more fun than sitting around on the couch. 100 calories per hour using your hands. I think this depends on the amount of effort you put in. Other ways sex helps you get fit and lose weight. 1. If you're having sex, you're not eating. 2. Active sex involves using your muscles. Kegels, anyone? Tighten and tone your abs, thrusting up. Thighs and butt, cowgirl. And biceps, think shake weight. While getting some happy hormone, reason number 7 to Nookie, and you don't have to buy new sneakers or special equipment, unless you want to. 3. Speaking of that happy hormone, with regular sex you'll stave off depression more easily, making you happier overall, giving you more energy, and reducing emotional eating. 4. Sexual stimulation produces phenethylamine, which is a kind of natural amphetamine that helps regulate your appetite. So next time you're feeling snacky in front of the TV, head to the bedroom instead of the kitchen. Again, it's another one of those reasons where there is evidence, but not concrete proof. Better safe than sorry, I say. Reason number three. Your skin will glow. Sex is a beauty treatment. Dr. Gloria G. Bramer, a Georgia-based licensed clinical sexologist, says sex is good for your skin in a number of amazing ways. According to her, an orgasm a day keeps the doctor away. As much as I like apples, this is a way better option. An orgasm is one of the healthiest things you can give yourself each day. From a sexologist's point of view, it should be included in your routine, along with brushing your teeth and washing your hair. So, how does sex make you more attractive? Let's count the ways. 1. Sex makes you glow. 2. Sex reduces acne. 3. Sex keeps you young. 4. Sex prevents dry skin. 5. Sex prevents wrinkles. 6. Sex cleanses your pores. Get your nookie and get your glow on. All these wonderful beauty benefits from having sex, a benefit all its own, it all adds up. Reason number two, because you can't sleep. How does sex put us to sleep? Well, one of the obvious answers is that because we often have sex at night, near our bedtimes, in bed, and it's a physical exertion, that it's just natural we doze off. We've discussed several times in this top ten list of reasons to Nookie, the amazing chemical cocktail, that our bodies produce during orgasm. 
Star players include norepinephrine, serotonin, oxytocin, vasopressin, nitric oxide, endorphins, and the hormone prolactin. From that mix, serotonin calms us and makes us feel happy. Oxytocin is the cuddle hormone, encouraging a feeling of love, comfort, and relaxation. Vasopressin is also pivotal in the pair bonding blend and accompanies melatonin in its release. Melatonin helps regulate our body clocks. Endorphins resemble the opiates in their abilities to produce analgesia and a feeling of well-being. The headliner in this game, though, is prolactin, the release of which is linked to the feeling of sexual satisfaction and mediates the recovery time, the minutes or even hours a man must wait before round two. Studies have also shown that men deficient in prolactin have faster recovery times and don't fall asleep immediately afterwards, obviously. Prolactin levels are also naturally higher during sleep, suggesting a link between the two. It's possible that the hormones released during orgasm leads to drowsiness. Reason number one, because you want to feel closer to your lover, and because you want your lover to feel closer to you. Sex and love. Sex and intimacy. Sex and romance. They're not the same. We all know this. The reason we have different words is because they are not the same. They do run in the same clicks sometimes, though, and that's what we're talking about. I'm going to come at this closeness topic from two angles, scientific and psychological. Well, they're both about what's in our heads, but you'll see. Sex and oxytocin. Feel all loverly. Oxytocin is a nanopeptide hormone that's released by both males and females during skin-to-skin -skin contact, sexual arousal, and levels are significantly higher during orgasm and ejaculation. Oxytocin also plays a role in bonding, desire, social recognition, and trust, and is therefore known as the cuddle hormone. Studies have also shown that oxytocin is associated with our ability to mediate emotional experiences in close relationships and maintain healthy psychological boundaries. In other words, it pulls a couple closer together and helps them stay closer. It does the same thing for our mothers with their children. Perhaps it should be called the loving family hormone instead. Foreplay equals love play. Oxytocin levels rise when we're touched anywhere on our body. Oxytocin is also released during orgasm itself, bonding us more closely to each other. In fact, research has shown that women who are currently involved in a committed relationship experience greater oxytocin swells in response to positive emotions than single women, leading researchers to speculate that a close, regular relationship may influence the responsiveness of the hormone. Oxytocin also increases our desire to be touched further, reinforcing the cycle of sex hormone escalation. We have sex. We feel cuddly, so we want to be touched more, more sex and closeness, which in turn creates more love feelings. You see where this goes? Yeah, there. Nothing like a good romp to get you in the mood for more nookie. Sex releases oxytocin. Oxytocin gives you the warm fuzzies. Remember those from when you first met? The warm fuzzies give you more patience. You're less likely to snap at your man when he leaves the toilet seat up, or get annoyed with your lady when she talks to you during the big game. Your lover feels this, and feels a change, and gives you more what you want in response to getting more of what he wants, or she wants, sex, and the feelings that go with it. It's called falling in love all over again. And now that the science part is done, which makes me kind of sad, since I'm a total geek for sex science. Well, <laughs> any science, really. Let's get on with the psychology. Here's the thing. We all have needs. We all want to feel loved and needed by our partner. Women get that from cuddling and talking and all the other small actions men perform in our lives. Men get it, or at least part of it, from sex. Knowing that we want to have sex with them, that we enjoy having sex with them, and that we make having sex with them a priority gives them what they need to feel masculine and manly and, yes, even romantic. Now I'm not going to go into every nuance here. There's plenty of time to explore the psychology of sex. But just think about this quote from The Breakup. If you haven't seen the movie, look it up on YouTube. I don't want you to do the dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. What if we didn't just have sex, but wanted to have sex? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, 
Are you ready for some nookie? Did you learn anything? I know that I did researching this piece. Reason number five alone about sex making me smarter is a good reason to add more of it to my life. And La Petite Moore as a headache relief. Yeah, I'm all for that. You know, not only did we give you amazing reasons to have sex, but we also just handed you some fun conversation topics and ways to start the discussions with your significant other. If you're looking for other things that might help you spice up your love life, try NookieNotes.com. We offer pre-written erotic stories and invitations that you can customize and send to your lover, sexy e-cards to heat things up, tips, ideas, suggestions, and a growing community. Join us there, like us on Facebook, Follow us on Twitter, pin us on Pinterest, watch us on YouTube. Just take that one step to getting more. We're looking forward to meeting you.